Hey everybody, Mike Steele here with Barbecue Champs Academy live show tonight. So great to have everyone with us and we are certainly excited uh, about the show tonight. We have got a three-time world champion, uh, Mr. Sterling Smith with Loot and Booty Barbecue uh, in the house tonight. It's one of our pit masters uh, here at Barbecue Champs Academy. Hey Sterling, how are you doing buddy? I'm awesome, man. How are you, Mike? Uh, I'm doing do well. I'm doing well. We got people steadily coming in. Uh, as you come in, if you would, give us a shout out and let us know that you are here. We certainly uh, give you guys props and uh, see who we all have got in the house tonight. Uh, we've got a lot of great questions to ask Sterling. And uh, there's Mr. John Lindsay. And he just popped up. Hey, John, how are you awesome, doing, buddy? Dude. I'm glad to see you here. And uh, there's Anthony. Uh, hey, awesome, buddy. Guys. How are you doing, man? Guys. So we're going to give everybody just a few minutes to get in. We don't like to kick off too, too quick on these. Um, and just kind of give everybody a chance to come in. And uh, during this time, I want to thank some of our partners that we have that kind of helps us do all these things. Uh, Mr. Danny Ham over at Be Extreme, uh, our newest uh, grilling uh, company. We got uh, Papa Joe. Uh, grilling supply and uh, we just picked them up so glad to have uh, those guys they carry a lot of uh, product that the uh, SCA guys are using and carry a lot of the rubs and we was uh, super excited to be able to partner uh, with those guys um, just got everything up uh, Jason is a, a great guy to work with and um, we're directing some folks to him as well so we certainly want to do uh, give them guys props as well. B&B Charcoal, Lone Star Barbecue Pro Shop, Mr. Brian Crawford. He's also got Crawford Barbecue Pit Products. And we mentioned it last week. I'll mention it again. He got first place at the American Royal. Yeah, that's Best cool, rub babe. on the planet, man. That was all. That season all is so good. Uh, Texas Pepper Jelly, Mr. Craig Sherry, and then Gunnar Wilhelm, awesome man. We product. had an awesome show last week with uh, David. Man, you talk about learning some stuff on knives. I had never learned so much on knives before in my life, but it was certainly great to have uh, him in. Once again, we got people steadily coming in. Uh, there's Mr. Frank. Hey, Frank, glad you joined us. Uh, there's Mr. Danny. We talked about him just a second ago. And uh, let's see, Sterling, you got a got a cook thermoworks yep there's a sca event uh, coming next up. weekend in uh, utah I got you. and uh, so, i don't know if i'm yeah i'm necessarily apparently. signed up for it but um i don't know yeah. you never know you never know so scott glad you are here with us this guy here uh sterling he took um a class i think it was terry roan's class Great First dude. ever SEA competition he cooked at this past weekend and had a seventh place. I don't how know how many teams. I think he said like 13 of the top 20 teams in SEA was competing. And uh, he, said, he said, I'm hooked. <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, yeah, after that, you are. Uh, we got Mr. Terry Roan in the house. Mr. Matt Overson's Terry. in the house. Nah, uh, cookout coach, Mr. Steve. Uh, he has done incredibly well. There's Mr. Ronald. Hey, Ronald, how are you doing, buddy? Uh, there's the other guy that was at that same cook-off. Uh, Jake had taken John Lindsay's class. That's and I uh, had a second place finish in a big competition. How awesome Jake, we appreciate you being here. Look, we, we got people steadily coming in. We appreciate you letting us know. Um, if you uh, got any questions for Sterling while we're rolling through this, uh, put them down in the comments. Anything. And, uh, and anything. He, he, this guy's an open book. He's always he's always great to talk to. He's just got that big personality. You gotta if love you gotta love Smitty. So I always call him Sterling and and all the guys up there at uh, the the barbecue uh, pitmaster guys. Uh, oh, uh, Rusty. He's like Smitty, Smitty, Smitty. And I was like, I know. I've always called him Sterling. So he'll answer to anything. Sterling, Smitty, world champion. It don't matter. So I am glad you're here, Sterling. I think we're gonna have a great night tonight. Gonna ask Absolutely. you a few questions, man. And and, and the first thing. Look, man, military people and what y'all do for the service of our great country, I always want to give you guys the spotlight because if it wasn't for the brave men and women like yourself serving and defending and fighting for the very freedoms that we have, we wouldn't have nothing in this great country. And, buddy, I want to give you props for that. Uh, and I want you to tell me a little bit about how you – 
uh, got in the Navy? I mean, was it yeah, right absolutely. out of high school? Was it uh, what was it a career from your dad? Was it something following in footsteps? Tell yeah. us the story. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, you know, I, I was actually born in Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, we moved when I was a baby, so I don't remember a lot of Memphis, Tennessee, but I was uh, mostly born and raised in the or, or primarily raised in the southeast, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia. I graduated high school in Georgia, and I we come from a big family. I have uh, several brothers and sisters, and they were all Navy vets in front of me. They all went to the Navy, and uh, it was, I guess it was just my time after high school. Yeah. So I joined the Navy after high school, and I went to San Diego for – well, actually, uh, Chicago for boot camp. And then uh, it's funny, you know, being born and raised in the southeast – and everything's hot and humid. I go to Chicago for boot camp from <laughs> December to February. Oh, it was wow. the coldest I've ever been in my life, man. <laughs> like, it was it was it was crazy. But um, you know what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. And uh, so after boot camp, I got stationed in uh, San Diego for my A school for about a year. And uh, I learned uh, I was a sonar technician. So oh wow! If, you, if you've ever seen the movie like hunt for red october and you know jonesy listening mm-hmm. to the headphones and he's i hear russian singing which is false by the way right um you know that's kind of what i did but i was on a surface ship so we listened for uh torpedoes and other ships and uh, submarines and all that kind of stuff and we were in the persian gulf in 97 and then uh, we were on what's called the small craft action team so we manned uh, 50 cal guns Oh, wow. And when these small boats would uh, rush us, we would, you know, man up and make sure we protected the ship, obviously, as always. So right. I was a gunner in the uh, Persian Gulf War in 97 uh, when we protected the no-fly zone. Um, what I thought was just amazing to be on a ship and go out and and see everything, you know, to see our, our first port we hit from uh, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, which I forgot to mention after A school. I got stationed on a ship in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, the USS Chosin, uh-huh. um, which is a Ticonderoga-class battleship, sorry, cruiser, that um, was stationed in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. So for the last three years, three years of my service, I, I lived on a ship in Hawaii. Wow. It's kind of cool, but wow, you know, there were times we went out and we had to do what we had to do. Yep. Um, so you know, the first port we hit on Westpac out of uh, Hawaii was Sydney, Australia. Oh. in 1997 and then we hit perth australia and we went straight to the persian gulf after that to protect the no-fly zone and do what we had to do and we were about four months there doing circles you know and making mm-hmm. sure that we 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 did what we had to do right and then you know we hit other countries mauritius hong kong singapore guam and like i said all that was just an amazing experience i love just going out and seeing other places and being there and experiencing life that's what it's about you know? Yeah, yeah, it really is. I've, I've talked to a couple of people, and my father-in-law was in the, the Navy as well. And, and um, you know, I hear that a lot with the, the Navy. Y'all get to go all over to different ports and stuff like that. I had a friend of mine back when I was in high school. He was in the Navy for 20 or 30 years. I can't remember. Yeah. a long time. Had a long he's service. Seen, he's seen the whole world, uh, brother. He said, man, it was just to go here and to go to Singapore and go this and go to that. Yeah. I was like, man, it is so it is an experience and you yeah. get to travel the world and see a lot of things and at the same time serve our country. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and once again, I'm, I'm like, Scott, uh, you know, thank you for your service. And, um, you know, to me, that's, that's what it's about. How long was you in the, uh, in the Navy, uh, Sterling? Yeah, I did uh, four years active and I did two years in the active reserve when I, uh, got out in Tucson, Arizona. So six yeah, years total. Six years and, total. Yeah. You know, when I did, when I, I was stationed in, uh, sorry, in San Diego. Um, I met my wife on the beach, and uh, she was from born and raised in Arizona. So, you know, I got out in 98 of active service, and uh, I've been in Arizona since then. And There you go. You know, we've created our life together. Yeah, life is good from there. Yeah. So, got out of the Navy. Um, when did you uh, when did you get into barbecue? Did you have an influencer when you was young? <clears throat> Mom, dad, grandfather, or so all the above? Or and, and and when did you when did you get started? Or did you always do that as a kid and went yeah, to the navy man. and got out and kept doing it? And then hey, I'm gonna get me. Tell me how you got into the competition stuff because everybody's always got a little different story. Yeah, you know, and 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 mine's kind of unique as well. You know, I was. Um, 
being raised, born and raised in the Southeast, you know, you know, barbecue it's everywhere, you yeah. know, it, and it's just traditional. It's cool barbecue. The best places are the rundown places on the corner that look shady, but it's the best barbecue, you know? Right. So I grew up with that kind of stuff, but you know, competition barbecue is a whole nother thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, I was always a competitive person. I played football. I wrestled since I was in, you know, in middle school. And I wrestled for the all Navy team when I was in San Diego, actually. Oh, cool. yeah. And, um, and, uh, so I, I love to compete and, you know, you gotta, I, I have that in me. And, um, I definitely did not get barbecue skills from my dad. <laughs> my dad, uh, engineer, I love my dad. He's an engineer. And, uh-huh. but you know, he would throw some burgers on the grill and then he'd walk off in a project <laughs> in the backyard and three hours later we got hockey pucks. <laughs> But you know, uh, my my dad's got amazing skills, but cooking is not cooking one of is them. not one. Okay, it is not. Um, and I love the guy, but that's not his thing. And where'd you, uh, where'd you get it from? I, you know, I I kind of grew up with my mom. Was um, you know, I, like I said, I raised was raised in a big family, two sisters, and you know, one four brothers. And we're like the Brady Bunch, we're a combined family. Right. And um, you know, my mother was always in the kitchen cooking for big families, so. I kind of gravitated to cooking with her and I, I liked the process and she had the whole, the old, uh, red and white gingham Betty Crocker cookbook with oh, you wow. know, all these notes in it and everything that, you know, change this, add this that she got from her mom. So, you know, I, I, I think I picked it up there. Right. And then, um, I just always kind of liked to grill in the backyard, but never the competition side. And right. I really didn't get into competition barbecue until I, you know, so after the Navy, I, I went to, I got out of the Navy, moved to Arizona, and eventually I graduated from Arizona State University with a degree in finance. Um, so I started working in banking. Uh, I did mortgages. I worked for, you know, some of the biggest banks in the world, doing everything from small business banking, uh, commercial real estate finance, lending, you know, looking at 10 page tax return documents of how this business is doing and if we should give this guy money. So, you know, that was always a help in building my business. Right. But, um, so I did that for several years. And then eventually I worked for a, a bank that's based out of Kansas city and they're the biggest sponsor of the American Royal. And every year they have an employee barbecue competition that it, this was back in the day when it was on the grounds of Kemper arena uh, before it's changed to the speedway now. Right. So um, they would get, it was, it was a big employee, uh, I guess, event. They would have bands play beer, come out and several teams. But the thing about this converse, the competition was, you had to have team members that consisted mostly of, you know, the bank's um, uh, employees. So, you know, there were people being in and ringers and all that. And I, I heard about this and I always liked to, this barbecue competition for the bank I work for. They're going to fly you out and do this thing. I'm like, yeah, man, I like to go out in my backyard and cook a steak and flip a burger. And some yeah. I thought it was amazing. So, right. you know, go out to the it's Kansas City, you know, go to Kansas City, we go to Kemper Arena. And you know I'm I'm used to my Weber, you know, gas grill in the backyard, and I see dudes pull up in like big <laughs> smokers, and like I see a brisket, and this dude's trimming this like whole, to me at the time it's like a whole cow. I'm like, I, I, don't, I think I'm out of my league here. You know, I'm not I'm not I'm not cut out for this. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think I had the proper equipment. But um, I saw all that, and it was it was just phenomenal to me, and I had an amazing time. And this was oh man. Uh, we're talking 2006, I think it was around there, 2005, 2006. And um, I, I, I thought it was amazing. And so when I got back home to Arizona, I went to, you know, Home Depot and I bought a $40 El Cheapo Brinkman, which is, which said hot, cold, and yeah. <laughs> ideal. Yeah. Ideal is where you'd be. <laughs> yeah. You know, a big bag of mesquite wood, some lighter fluid, and a pork butt on the way home and made the worst piece of meat in my life after that. <laughs> And uh, I thought, you know, I needed smoke. So that thing was chugging like a train. I'm surprised <laughs> my neighbors didn't call the cops on me. <laughs> but, um, you know, after that, I wanted to get better. I wanted to learn. Right. And it was, a, it was a process after that. And eventually, in uh, 2007, we, I came back with the bank and I saw the American Royal on the grounds of Kemper Arena. And at that time, it was just spread out everywhere. And I was like, oh, my God, look at this. Is this really a thing? Like people just camp out in their RVs and could meet overnight for several days. And I was like, oh man, how do I, how do I do this? Like, what's my step? 
So I, I got back to Arizona and I found the Arizona Barbecue Club. And it was a tailgating club initially, but there were comps out here. I didn't even know it. You know, that's been going on for years. And um, the Arizona Barbecue Club kind of got me into barbecue. And in 2009, a buddy of mine um, entered a competition together. It's Loot and Booty Barbecue, and the rest is history. I'll be dang. That's a, that's a great story right yeah. there. So, uh, and I'll tell you what, I mean, you've got, uh, you've got a lot of accomplishments. Um, you're a three-time world champion, uh, which is amazing to be able to, to do that. Not only, I, th- I think one of the things to me that is uh, impressive is not only are you a world champion in the United States, but a lot of people may not know, you're a two, two, Time Australian lamb champion yeah, back to back, yeah, you know. So, so cool. to be able to take your process from the United States and go over there to Australia, which we don't cook a whole lot of lamb in the United States, that's a big deal for them. I did a lot before and, I went over there. Yeah, and uh, to, to go over there in their neck of the woods and and beat them out in, in a meat that they cook a lot, kudos to you man that's that's pretty amazing to be able to do that so it was just a um, phenomenal time to just compete with those guys from australia who are just so passionate about the sport and and are are loving what we're doing so to be with those guys and see it from the ground up and like kind of feels like when i first started barbecuing right right. the love and the passion for it yeah yeah so i know and then you went just recently didn't you hit a world champion in brisket that gave you your third one, didn't you? So yeah, for the, so I was invited in 2017 uh, to compete at the uh, Australian uh, Invitational, and uh, the KCBS. Um, actually, I'm sorry, it was an ABA Australian Barbecue Alliance uh-huh. competition. Right. Um, so they're a little different. It's the four meats, chicken, ribs, pork, and brisket, but it's also lamb. So you got five turn-ins. Um, so I went over and, and taught two classes. And um, I got to compete with the guys in 2007, uh, 2017 in Australia, in Sydney at the Australian Royal Invitational. So leading up to that point, I knew that obviously I had to cook lamb. So, I mean, for I would say three or four months up to that competition, I was cooking nothing but lamb. Mm-hmm. My family's like, stop feeding us lamb. You're killing us. Like, well, you got it, man. <laughs> so you know i i just had to get it right and you know when i wanted to get something right you just make it happen right yeah <laughs> so you know i go into the comp down there and, and teach class do the competition end up uh i think i took uh first in chicken maybe uh first in lamb and grand champion first place overall right. and uh you know it, it was just amazing to be with the guys in the 2018 um they invite me back. They're like, you know, American, we can't give this guy a title. You can't be the reigning, you can't be the reigning <laughs> land champion in Australia. Right. So they invite me back and, um, and I did the same thing, cooked it, cooked a lot of it and made it right. And I got first place in lamb again. Yeah. I think I was maybe fourth or fifth in, in um, a brisket or, or overall, but right. it, it was just a phenomenal time. And then last year was the world invitational or is an actual world uh, championship. And I took first in brisket uh, down there competing with those guys. And yeah. the cool thing about Australia is they got some phenomenal briskets and phenomenal yeah. meat. There's the, 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 the marbling and some of that, uh, Wagyu meat and the, the, the beef the that chart. they have, it's just off the chart. And yeah. the flavors just, you know, everything's going to taste what it eats yep, and, and, it. And, it, and it's different, yep. you know, and, and it's so flavorful. And I work with some phenomenal butchers down there. George's, it's, uh, or, uh, George's fine meats and cherry Brook uh, for the invitational. And then, you know, Char 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 in Melbourne, Glenn, he's an awesome guy. He gets some of the best meats down in Melbourne. So it's phenomenal to like partner with some of these guys down there who are bringing in some of the best of the best quality products. Right. Yeah. Matt Overson says, y'all need to go back in 2020. Y'all have some unfinished business there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We know, that is a story, man. That was just, you know, we were all ready to cook and have a good time. And then it, it was March, you know, I think we're early mid March and, you know, COVID was, you know, just hit. And yeah. unfortunately we were, I got to teach a class on that Thursday night, which was, which was a great time at Char Char Char, which I mentioned in Melbourne. Uh, but we get there the next day to set up. And unfortunately, you know, what happened happened and yeah. it shut down. And those, the, what's cool thing is um, there's a guy in Australia, Jay, uh, she Becker who offered up his property to have the guys actually have the SCA comp 
which was wow. um, on the other side of Australia. So they actually got to hel- uh, hold that comp, and a bunch of guys went over there. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it, but um, they actually came together. And what's really cool about SCA is, you know, they get to band together and say, hey, we got a location. Let's make it happen. You know, right. and those guys right. did, and that's yeah. really cool. So yeah. absolutely, 2021, man, let's go. Yeah. Um, well, I know some of your accomplishments, and one of the ones that I brag on you all the time is – you are the chicken king. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about king. Yeah, you are. Come on, man. Seven perfect 180 scores. Currently ranked in KCBS number one in chicken with five comps or less. Uh, man, you, you, your chicken that you cook in that class on Barbecue Champs is Pretty absolutely good, huh? phenomenal. That sauce exactly. of yours is. I mean, I know you got a concoction that you mixed up, and if you want it, you can go to bbqchamps.com and you can go you click Sterling's name. But, man, I am telling you, that chicken sauce that you have is freaking money. So, Thank you, man. I appreciate um, it. It is so, like it it's well. so good. So we've got, a, we've got somebody on here, and I'm going to throw his name up here. And uh, let's see. Let me go. I don't want to miss him because you're going to recognize him. Here we go, Mr. James. Yeah. What's up, First buddy? class uh, that he took. He took some state class. He took some backyard classes. Then he jumped over, and this is a an amazing guy that is transformed from the backyard into. He's not a competition cooker yet, but by gosh, I'm scared to death of him if he gets out there. He is taking your class. I think cooking. he jumped over and took Mark Lambert's class. But man, he has been throwing some pictures up. Oh my gosh. That. The pictures he has been putting up has been I amazing. I saw that brisket the other day. Look just oh look god, juicy. and them oh, ribs man, that, that he did here about two it. weeks ago. Phenomenal. Yeah, them ribs that he did made, making his own sauce and trying some stuff. So that's what you do? That's how you know. That's what I love about these classes is you know we can show you exactly what we're doing you right. know, step by step. You know we do. This is yeah, what we're doing. Yeah. You know. Um, but what's really cool is to take your spin on it. You know, take what you're doing, take education from other classes and, and build that all together to build your profile, your way of doing it. Yeah. You know, and I've actually taken some classes from yeah. Ips Academy. And I, I, to me, if you're not moving forward, if you're not learning, you're staying still. That's right. In, business, backwards. in competition, whatever, it's not good. Yeah. So you always got to be moving forward. Yeah. The more information, the better, the more knowledge you can take from amazing people who are known to, to win. Yeah. I mean, I mean, how can you not pass it up? Yeah, so he says, I'm coming for you, Smitty. The yeah. student becomes the teacher, laughing out yes, loud. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's hey, fun, you it's just loud. stay in the you stay in the backyard and leave us alone. We're scared of you, buddy. So anyway. Oh, it up, James. Let's go, baby. You yeah, know. I'm telling you. And, and, and I know James uh, got you out there, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, your involvement with uh, Green Mountain Grill. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but sure, sure, sure. Um, but let's let's kind of go into let's. I tell you what, let's go into you know somebody like James. What what do you have for like some pro tips for for barbecue backyard? Maybe for like the backyard person, like here's James. He came yeah, into yeah. this deal. He's making it his own now. Like Danny says, make it his own. He's learning the techniques, and now he's just that, – that's the that's the thing. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube, but there's so much stuff on YouTube that is so yeah. wrong in so many ways. Learning from these world champions, then you can kind of take it, and you, you can really – I'm starting to see him just like I'm getting comfortable stepping out and doing things. Yeah. But what is, what's a couple pro tips that you could you know, give you maybe for the backyard or for the comp guy alike? I, I say this a lot in the barbecue classes that I teach across the country is – you know, you don't really want to pay attention to the recipe because the, the recipe is a recipe. You want to uh, listen to the meat. You want to know what's going on. You want to listen to the bark, know the smell of things that are happening. And you've got to know uh, if, if you're wrapping, when to wrap and when it's done by tenderness and touch and feel. And a lot of that is something you have to get in the backyard and do. That's Go right. cook. Get off Facebook. Get off YouTube. Get off all these videos that you're going to have 75 people telling you to do it this way. Just get in your backyard and cook, and that's how you're going to learn. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of these classes are designed to take a bunch of that away. And um, especially what's cool about my class that I like to teach is the science of what's happening in the barbecue. 
you know, not just put a quarter cup of rub on this and reject it with this. I mean, why are we doing that? You know, let's talk about the science behind why we're doing it and what that injection and what that rub is going to do to that meat, to the end product. Because mm-hmm. competition barbecue is not home barbecue. It's not, you know, catering barbecue. It's getting that end product for six people who are going to tell you, to, who expect something. So we have to give them that. So we need to know not only the recipes, but why we are doing the process or what we're doing. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So and that's that, what's cool about these rest, these, these classes is that's what we do. Yeah. We tell you why we're doing it. Not yeah. just because, you know, I, I do it because last comp I hit first and, you know, maybe right. that's true. I wear the same underwear sometimes if I did well. <laughs> yeah, you don't mess it up. If it ain't broke, <laughs> but, don't fix it, but, right? But, you know, yeah. we're telling you the science behind why we're doing something. Yeah. Like this. You, you, you know, did. put a quarter cup of this and do that, and then it ends up like this, and that's awesome, and I win. Right. You, know, you don't know. And that's the one reality. thing I, I think that we really teach with barbecue champs. I'm over here asking questions and really dragging that information out. Why do you do this? What's the yeah. purpose? Of it? And it allows you to really go into the details. Yes. And I think that's what people are loving about the classes at barbecue champs because we come across you, me, we're comp cookers. We know we automatically assume, you know, you know, there's a saying, I don't know if it was in the Navy, you know, assumptions, the mother of all, you know, what's, and we can't assume that. And, um, so we want to really break it down. And I thought you did a phenomenal job. I'd ask a question. Here's what it is. And here's what it is. And this is why I'm doing this is this is what I'm looking for and why it's the, it's the hows, it's the what's it's the why's it's the, here's the end product that we're trying to achieve. That's going to take you from being a a one-time GC to a good pit master. Who's consistent. Yeah. Once you, once you figure out the why and the process and and, then the repetition and, 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 you know, become the judges realize that you got to understand this is, it's changed a lot and you know this is the 12th season i've been competing in it's it's changed a lot since i started and it's always morphing it's always changing there's flavor profiles there's you know ways to do things that you know i used to do thighs and wings i don't haven't done that in years i've done right. legs now yeah you know i'm, I'm constantly kind of moving with the times and trying to learn what's what, what's happening or what the judges want and right. i may not hit it all the time which i don't because i love to play man i love to cook but the process of what we're doing and why I'm doing it, it's kind of going to be the same. Yeah, I, I think that's a big thing for the backyard cooker. Um, what What's the biggest mistake you think the backyard cooker comes when it comes to fire management? What do you think? You think it's too much smoke? They just... I, I think, you know, when I was first starting out, I think what I had to learn was patience. You know, wait till it's right. You know, a lot of people may want to uh, dump the coals too quick. They're not ready. Put the put the meat on before the smoke's right. You know, right. I mean, barbecue is one of those waiting games. Yes, where you got to get the smoke right. You got, I mean, everything's just getting it right. And and me as a person, I, I, I want to just get it on there. Let's do it. Let's, let's start cooking. Let's make right. it happen. And I think patience is one of those things that kind of barbecue makes you have. If you didn't have patience before, which I really wasn't a patient person, but right. barbecue makes you a patient person because if you want that perfect end result, you have to be patient. You have yeah. to wait for it. You have yeah. to wait for the meat to tell you it's ready. It's right. And if you push it, you try to, to make it something it's not, then you're not going to get the perfect end result. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right there. I mean, it is patience, timing, consistent, good mm-hmm. notes, what you're doing. I think all of that comes into Run play. a game plan. We know your stuff. Yeah. I said, I said a phrase, which, I'm not a chef by any means, hardly, but means and plus, you know, every pl- everything in place, everything in order, have organization, know what you're doing, and, and run your game plan. Yeah. I didn't know this. James said that's why we went to Arizona to become an SCA judge, so we learned yes. both. Of, I did not know that, James. Wow. So, so yeah, was- I, actually, I actually also promote SCA comps, and I've done several here in Arizona. Okay. And uh, we've had Brett Galloway from the SCA come out and teach uh, state classes. So James was coming through with his wife, and they both signed up for the. They're they're certified SCA judges. They've been wow. to the SCA judging class, and you know I hope to see them out at comps and events. And it's really cool to see them get engaged and involved. And in, I, I guess this underground barbecue culture thing that we have going on. <laughs> well, it's going it's man. Fascinates me sometimes when I think about it. It's you know yes. it's something I never even dreamed of twelve years ago. 
Yes, John or James, you have got to get out there and go do an SEA competition. This man right here. So Mr. the next Scott, one, he, so he SCA, jumped, speaking of that, buddy, um, yeah. December, I think it's, uh, man, 12th weekend. I think we're looking at that in Scottsdale at the new Barbecue Island location here in town. And then we have the Slabarama Barbecue event in January in uh, Bullhead City, Arizona, which we're going to have another SCA stake. It's a KCBS comp as well. And I'll be promoting the SCA portion of that and competing in the KCBS side. I got to get out there and yeah. do what I do, man. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's all about. James, I want you to get out there, money, and, and go do a competition. Come out, man. You got to do one. I got you grills. Have... I got a pop-up tent. I got whatever you need. I, I can I can give you a, a charcoal, man. Just come out, and we'll make it happen. Yep. Um, yeah, it's it's fun. Uh, Kyle, yeah. what's up, buddy? Hey, Kyle. What's going on, man? We got all kind of folks in here. So He's the he's uh, hey, SCA Brandy. Auxiliary King crushing it. Him and his dad are just yeah. doing awesome right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, good AZ dude. Yeah, I'm telling you, we got a lot of folks coming in, and it's great. Look, if you guys got any questions, this is the question and answer we we always want to do that. And uh, and if you've got any questions, let us have them. You know, Sterling, he's he's anything. He'll, he'll, like he'll, I said, I'll talk about we'll, pyramids, we'll talk, how they we'll happen, about how all they're built, so, alien stuff like that. You know, yeah. Anything, so just, man. if you got any questions, I may not know the answer, but I'm gonna make it up. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt there's a whole lot that you don't know. So, um, all right. So let's, uh, some good pro tips there. And and, and like I said, guys, if y'all have any questions, just shoot them across. That's what makes these, these live, uh, shows so nice because they're not something that's pre recorded. You can pick the minds of these guys and we're always willing to share. Give us some good pro tips and some things to do. I want to get a little bit of information about the green mountain grill now when we filmed yeah, our 20 championship backyard barbecue classes we were standing outside the building at the end of the driveway there's my massive awning i got a 40 25 <laughs> by 45 awning that's 15 feet up in the air for our my toy hauler to pull up underneath and i think it was me and you and mark lambert and joey joey and uh and Craig, Lee Hickle, there, maybe? And Craig, I don't know if Craig was out. I think, I don't know if Craig was there or not, but we were standing up underneath Lee's awning and we look at the end of the driveway, like uh, 80 feet away. <laughs> and we see this plume of smoke ball rolling out of the roof of the and awning. And this awning is 15 maybe. foot high and this thing has got smoke rolling out of it. And we're looking at each other and like we had one pit, one smoker lit. It was the green, the Jim Bowie <laughs> Green Mountain Grill pellet cooker. And we were all like, I ain't never seen a pellet cooker put out so much smoke in all my life. Sterling, we, what we the heck is going on with this thing? So you know, we were tell slow, me. Slow, slow, man. It was just putting out so much smoke. Yeah, I think it was running at 300 was degrees. Yeah, we start low and then we ramp that thing up. And when that smoke goes and that hits, you know, with the PID controller, the uh, temperature gauge, the auger. The controller, they all work together um, to give you that nice smoke throughout um, the Green Mountain Grills. But it's, you know, it's also based on the pellets. And there's certain ways to use that pellet grill to get more smoke out of it. You know, I, I tell people in barbecue classes all the time is, you know, look, or I, I usually do these at a retailer, a barbecue store, you know. And if you look around the floor, there's there's all different grills. There's all different smokers. There's everything on the floor because, you know, that's what life's about, variety. So I, I tell people, basically, all, everything on the floor, it's, it's all a tool. And, and as right. long as you know how to use that tool to get an amazing product at the end, then it doesn't matter what you cook on. You right. know, Learn to know the tool and get a phenomenal product at the end. Right. And, and that comes with doing it, You know, getting yeah. in your backyard and making it happen. Stay off Facebook and YouTube. And well, go back to the meat and put it on a grill. That, but the cool thing about the GMG is you can get some phenomenal smoke on that with the algorithms we have built in, especially with the new Prime Plus grills we have. So many options. Um, you can control them from your phone with the Wi-Fi, collapsible shelves. We have windows throughout the thing. And the flavor that you get oh. off of those is, 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 is unparalleled. You know? is. And, and, and we've seen that in proof in competitions. We cooked um, on all GMGs. Uh, John Reeves from Smoking X and I went out to Enid, Oklahoma, and we decided to just put our rings in the hat and could compete as Team Green Mountain Grills. We competed on uh, three Jim Bowie Green Mountain Grills, and we took third overall with pretty wow. consistent results. 
you know, against some of the best in the best. And, you know, it, it's about just doing it, putting in the time, putting in an injury, running your game plan, and um, making it right. The cool thing about barbecue champs is you're going to take a lot of that uh, – that that ramp up period to know shorten how the learning to curve shorten the learning curve yeah, absolutely it. we're going to do yeah. that for you yeah. we're going to give you a, a real world information you know yeah. there's there's phenomenal cooks on there Corey Mike from Fat Boys has been you know tearing it up and David Bosco you know I've looked up to him for years you know coming up in barbecue yeah. um uh, uh Mark Lambert from Sweet Swan of Mine is a legend you know oh, uh, yeah. it's, it's phenomenal and and uh, Joey from Texas Chrome and Lee Hickel and those guys being involved with those guys to me is it's 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 pretty uh, you know um, breathtaking to yeah. just sit back and think about it. it. It's an elite group, there's no doubt. And uh, you know the feedback that we just continue to get. You know, Glenn has taken Craig several Sherry of our too. classes. I've been using this Texas pepper jelly forever. Oh yeah, Craig Except is some of that chicken sauce. Yeah, yeah, you ain't kidding. And Glenn has taken a lot of our classes, and he just absolutely loves the classes, you know. And like I said, that's what it's all about. So, absolutely. Um, I don't know. I mean, to me, it, it's really great. You, you did a phenomenal job on um, on your um, on your class. There's there it is right there, Mr. Sterling Smith, the Luton Barbecue baby. It's Tell All class. Uh, Thirty four videos over eight and a half hours. Brisket ribs, pork butt, and chicken. Uh, I'm telling you, look at that. I mean, I wish we could play the video and you could actually see it. I don't think it plays it's very not, well. Unbelievable. But I'm telling you, it is it is there. You can watch yeah. all of these videos on a desktop, your your tablet, your iPhone. Um, that chicken, I have. I don't know how many times that I have posted that chicken class. <laughs> it is just absolutely phenomenal. But you know five ninety nine gets all of them, you know, yeah. or you, there it is. You, or you can buy an individual class, two forty nine. add another class for 150. Uh, all of your food was incredibly good. Well balanced. Yeah. You just, you, just about balance. you know, it, it, nothing was out of bounds. And yeah. to me, that is, that is what sets you apart. I think is, is how good everything is. Uh, here's a question. Sure, is sure, there sure. a story behind your team name? Yes. Kind of, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, loot and booty barbecue, you know, it's kind of piratey, you know, yeah. loot and barbecue loot is, you know, like to a pirate's treasure, yep. you know, booties, like the gold and doubloons, it's cash, you know, cash and treasures and, and shit like that. Yeah. So, you know, being a Navy vet when, um, you know, a buddy and my, uh, when we first started the team, you know, we knew, I, you know, I went to the Royal in 2007 and saw all this stuff happening, and I saw all these awesome team names. I was like, we can't just go out there as, you know, Smitty and Chris Barbecue. Yeah. That, that doesn't sound cool. So we needed a team name, and right. literally we, we jotted maybe a dozen team names on a piece of paper, and Loot and Booty was one of the teams that I, you know, jotted down. I had the logo in mind already, you know, the pig skull and crossbones. I wanted some, I, I wanted that. So I right. had that logo in mind. I didn't have a name for it yet. Right. And then, uh, you know, all these team names that we wrote, wrote down, um, we kept going back to loot and booty barbecue and it yeah. just fit with the pirate motif oh, yeah. of the pig skull and crossbones. It's a homage to my days in the Navy, you know, yeah. we're, all the seas. We're, we're, we're all pirates. Yeah, that was, it was yeah. funny. My father-in-law, he was in the Navy for 25 years or something. And, oh, that's awesome. And when I said, so I said, yeah. for service. yeah, and I was like, you know, people, he said, I said, we got Sterling Smith coming in from Luton Booty Barbecue. Luton Booty Barbecue, he's a Navy guy. I like him yeah. already. <laughs> and I was like, how do you know that's, that's, he said, oh, Luton Booty. He said, I already know that's, that's Navy. And I was like, well, you're right. He is. So we all got a little pirate in us, right? Yeah, that's, you do. I think so our, we have been out on sea for, several months at a time have maybe a little bit more a little yeah salty. right but right. um you know it just fits and um it's a homage to my days in the navy absolutely and, you know, i think pirating it's a, and being on the seas the logo is awesome it pops on the bottle when you sit i don't know if i can reach over there and grab it it pops on the bottle when you look yeah. at it it's just a catchy name that stands out and it's a freaking unbelievable product. So Thank all right, you. I want to I want to talk a little bit about some of your cooking classes. Uh, yes. You do yes, about 25, 20, 25 I used to. backyard cooking <laughs> classes across the country um, for Green Mountain Grill. Where have you got some coming up at? Yeah, well, yeah, I used to, man. Last year, I think I did about 28 of them. Yeah. And then, you know what happened? 
Twitter breaks. Yeah, yeah thanks for COVID. Twitter, yeah. Thanks, March. You know, yeah. that happened. Um, uh, there are several that I had to cancel and postpone, but I do have a couple coming up. In October 3rd, actually on Saturday, October 3rd, I'll be at Barbecue Maestro's Barbecue Indy in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, the website's bbqindy.com. Uh, we're going to be doing a phenomenal menu. We have some um, green chili pulled pork tacos. We're doing some um, uh, pork al pastor and the GMG rotisserie, GMG flatbreads. We're doing chicken wings. We're doing uh, tri-tip sliders with caramelized onions and some provolone oh. cheese and just, you know, all that yeah. amazing backyard stuff that you could do on a Green Mountain Grill, yeah. which is anything you can cook on anything, yeah. the GMG can do it. There's pizza yeah. ovens. Now we have the Prime Plus with the rotisserie attachment. So we're going to use that a lot. And uh, we're just going to show all uh, the versatility of this grill. And that's what we really love doing with these classes is showing what you can do with this grill. You can smoke anything or cook anything from 150 up to 550 degrees. And, you know, the, the world's your oyster on one of those grills. Yeah. And then uh, November 14th, we're working at Hot Sauces and More in El Cajon, California. Uh, hopefully by that time we're open up and ready to go. But Brian over there in El Cajon at Hot Sauces and More, we're going to do a holiday GMG class. So we do things like a prime rib and we do a green chili turkey breast and we do some rack of lamb and we do just some, you know, holiday uh, centric uh, menu items on there. So we got a couple of those coming up. Like I said, a couple of them got postponed and canceled that we're looking to go into 2021 with. And, um, you know, in these times, all we got to do is adapt and overcome. And that's what the military has really taught me is to, you know, when life gives you something, you just got to make it happen and go from there. And we put a lot of focus and energy into the website right now. Uh-huh. And a lot of people have time to sit home and, and cook. And, uh-huh. you know, it's, it's a good time for barbecue. Yeah. Because people actually have that time. You know, in our busy busy day on the nine to five, we don't have time to cook a rack of ribs, a pork shoulder and all that. So, you know, people have time now. And so I'm uh, um, really looking at focusing on uh, just release my new website with a lot of new products yep. and the videos to... and the classes and everything. And, yep. and it's just a good time. We're fixing to talk about that. Uh, so we've, we've covered everything on the Green Mountain Grill. Uh, I know that you had a brand new relaunch of your website today. Yeah. And uh, and James just brought up, you know, the new Jolly, the new Jolly Roger. That's we're going to we're going to talk about a few things. We we got the uh, Jolly Roger. Uh, We've got the uh, my one of my all time favorites, the Luton Booty uh, Everything Rub. You know what? Everything. It's good on everything. Your your Gold Star Chicken Rub. You know, it, off the you flipping know chart. I don't care what you do. You could put that dead gum stuff on a dead gum flip flop. I know a lot of country teams across the country that are doing very well with this. Yeah, well, I bet because yeah, mean, the that, judges what they want, man. Yeah, they that chicken, it, that chicken rub team. paired with your chicken sauce for your class. I'm just telling you right now, you I could drink that. that you can gum almost stuff. not even taste chicken, right? Oh my gosh, I can <laughs> I can put it on a southern <laughs> made donut. I'm telling you right now how good <laughs> that is. Put it on huh? a donut. Huh? Hi, hey, night. hey, if they, if they only knew, if everybody only on knew the secret of the Southern made donut and what we've done with some barbecue sauce <laughs> on the donuts on down yeah. here. Yeah. So Mix it with some uh, Craig Sherry. Oh, my gosh. Rallies. That and that so bread just, pudding. Is that shoulder ever recovered? <laughs> no, man. It never has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was some good times right there. I'm telling you. It was. Best yeah. bread pudding ever in my life was cooked on that green mountain grill with you doing your backyard classes i don't like bread pudding that much but my gosh that bread pudding was free it was unreal. good and then i think it was mark lambert who said to put some of that texas pepper jelly on it and it yeah. kind of took it to that next level now, remember I, actually I, turned, I, I grabbed I, the I, thing I, and i threw it in the spoon <laughs> and i said try the i was like oh my god that's when i started beating you to death he's like what are you doing i was like you gotta try it and he was like Oh my gosh, it so was funny. Uh, a buddy of mine from Australia, Dan Barrett from Big Smoke Barbecue, he got the Australian uh, Houston Livestock draw last year to compete at Houston Livestock Rodeo. So we competed together. You know, I got he's a, a great ambassador for Green Mountain Grills. So we got some uh, grills out there here there for him to use, and some gateway drums, and some you know just get them all set up. Right. And uh, I, I cooked chicken with them, and then I did the bread pudding in a cast iron thing for uh, my our dessert turned in and I put some of the Texas pepper jelly on top and it was oh I didn't gosh. get a call in the top 10 but it was pretty it was pretty oh, that, that stuff it, you can it just makes it a 
a bread it makes pudding the cobbler. It's, it makes it's so a bread good. pudding cobbler. Yeah. All right, so let's get to Where we get barbecue. Here. Let's let's yeah. go there. James uh, James talked about we we're going to talk a little bit. I know your new one is your Jolly Roger. It's this black brisket rub oh, that is phenomenal. Garlic. Um and um, he put it on his brisket. Maybe that was the one that he posted a couple of days ago. It was, it, he good. said it pushed the brisket over the top. This guy already know because he's, he's cooked a lot. So I want to talk a little bit. Let me go over here real quick. We'll talk a little bit about um, your new website. Chrome, let's go right on over here. Brand new yeah, website. Yeah. Just launched today. Um, you got all your pictures rolling in the background. A couple big KCBS uh, that's the American Royal Trophy. Right? I mean, that American was a first Royal. place chicken in Invitational in 2014, and then a reserve grand champion of the Open in 2014. Yeah, uh, placed several years in pork and ribs, Turkey a couple years ago, and I love going out there. Unfortunately, it's canceled this year. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I'll be out in Shawnee, Oklahoma, doing that double, which is you know pretty much the same weekend as the Royal. Right. Um, you know, I was already going that way. Might as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, I'm sitting here looking at some pictures that somebody did in Barbecue Champ Academy's class. Look at that. That's so if you it. want to That's know what video. the food looks like, there it is. There was some chi- look at them chicken legs. Ribs were amazing. You cooked those on the on the pellet cooker. Uh-huh. I'm just telling you, man, it was it was phenomenal. I love your website. If you're looking for his class, it's it, there's the video that that we play all the time for him and yep. and he's got a place here that you can click it and play it as well. Uh, you've got revamped this with uh, all your product and stuff. Yeah, just very, very visible. Focused. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Uh, tell us about this. Let me see if I can click on that. Is that going to take me somewhere? Well, where that, that take, take you to my Instagram page? Yeah, is that good? Yeah. I don't know. You might want to watch that where that takes you to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you see the screen on that? Did it pop up? Yeah. Well, okay. it didn't pop up, but I see the uh, just the bottom of the screen there with the tri tip. It's basically the Jolly Roger rub with the an awesome tri-tip that we coated in that uh, rub and then we did a okay. refresh steer yeah and uh, you know that that rub is just adds an amazing bark and not only the bark but the flavor you get from it you know i'm not using activated charcoal i'm not using some bitter charcoal in there i'm using um, some coconut shell you know okay. which adds a, a different layer of flavor and then all the other spices and ingredients we add to it just accumulate to the end result that i'm looking for right so when we when we do a lot of these development of rubs or sauces and you know, I don't like to just put something out, you know, right away. I want to make sure it's, it's right. So I cook with it a lot. I taste it a lot. I I, I, I cook with this black rub for probably the last year. Not, not only barbecue competitions, backyard, just all kind of stuff and, and various barbecue classes that I've done to get some feedback from people who've tasted it. This was probably over a year in development to where I got it to where I, I wanted to. And working with a partner like Old World Spices, which is my co-packer, um it, it, it's it's a great partnership because they have the highest quality ingredients they work with some of the best teams in the country um, and um having ability to get some of these best products gives us um a, an amazing product at the end which which leads to results you know yeah it's, it's, it is what it is it does what it does and says what <laughs> says what well, it says it does what it does yeah well i can tell you that line of rubs right there that everything rub is phenomenal uh what what is what is some things that that just stands out using any one of your rubs i mean I, i'm 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 pretty sure you're going to go for the everything <laughs> rub what i mean what what is something that just really you've got to try yes. this rub or, or, or on you've got to try it on this so this this is it i'm gonna tell you right now all which right. I'm actually going camping this weekend. We're heading out, and, and usually when we camp, we bring families together. We've been doing this trip for ten plus years, and I, obviously everybody knows I barbecue, so I got I got I got a barbecue, right? So I, I bring like a gateway drum out and like you know hang like ten racks of ribs, and um, we've been doing that for the last couple of years. But take the what's your beef rub? I know it says beef, uh-huh. but put it on racks of ribs. Just coat it in some racks of ribs. Hang them in the gateway drum. I mean, this is just some backyard stuff right here. Yeah. Like, what's your beef? Hang them in the gateway drum until they're tender, almost falling apart. When, when one of them falls in the fire, <laughs> you know you're done. <laughs> they're ready. One of them, they're ready. So, you wow. Know, you know, just grab glove on, get it out of the fire. Maybe wrap it up in foil a little bit, let it rest, or you know, back on right. Right. for a little bit, just until it's probe tender, and that's it. Wow. What's your beef and ribs is 
one of my favorite combinations of product. And I, I don't really know why like it just it. works well together. Yeah, I remember tasting it for the first time, and I was like, it's got some Worcestershire powder in it, doesn't it? And yeah, like, yeah, and it works yeah, awesome on brisket I, and beef and steak and all that, but try it on ribs. I, Believe I could, me. I could detect Believe it. Yeah. And, on pork, uh, it, does, it does phenomenal. And then I know you've got some amazing sauces. That, that the honey original? mustard sauce. I actually won first place honey mustard sauce at the uh, at 2020 NBBQA conference out of okay. all the honey mustard sauces. Unfortunately, <laughs> you know, during COVID and all that, I couldn't enter my sauces in the American Royal um, Championship. I was out of product, but... You know, I mean, there's always next year, right? That's it. I mean, it ain't going away. And the cool thing is well, there's some amazing people affiliated with Barbecue Champs Academy that had some uh, awesome calls. And, you know, Brian Crawf Crawford with first place to rub with that all-purpose yeah. rub. Was, it's always cool to see, like, you know, people that you know yeah. uh, that are awesome in the industry that are that are doing well. And so it's really cool to see, like, a bunch of friends and family uh, that I can or people that I consider family uh, do well in those competitions, you know? Yeah. So, uh, Darren's got a question. What Darren sauce? Love yeah, it. What, yeah. Sauce, what sauce is used for chicken? Which one would you recommend? I would recommend first place chicken sauce as seen in my competition chicken video. Yeah. Um, but I mean, are you the one I'm using in competition? I use a variation of sauce. Yes, no, his comp, his, can't give that things. out. I'm telling you, can't give that out. His chicken sauce is. I a, would say something you and your family love. If you love sweet baby rays, use that. Yeah. He loves Blue Zog, which is some great sauces. I've used, been using them for years right. in competition, which there may be some of that in my chicken sauce. Right. You know, use that. <laughs> right. if, you, if grandma's been making a sauce for the last, you know, 80 years that has some random ass stuff in it, then use that. You know, right. use what you like. And, you know, yeah, and when it comes to competition, I would just say balance, balance flavors. Yeah. Not anything too, too spicy, too sweet, too anything, too smoky. It's all right. about balance. It's all about balance, yeah. yeah. I, I think your original sauce is the bomb on chicken. I know it's one of your. I use that man, too. But you, you, if you want a ultimate chicken sauce that you could just practically put in a squirt bottle and shoot it down your throat, his competition <laughs> chicken sauce is a donut. barbecue champ. Yeah, put it on a donut. My gosh. All right, so Mr. Danny Hammett, be extreme. He's got a yeah. question. How did you sure. come up with your rubs? Mine all came from playing around and tweaking. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, you know, I started competition barbecue as a team in 2009. And then, um, you know, at that time, there were certain products available. And me being in the kitchen and wanting to cook, I always loved uh, experimenting with things. Man, if you look at my cupboard, there's so many big jars <laughs> of spices and, and other people's products, which I love. I love tasting other people's products. And I have a million of them in my cupboard right now. But it, it was basically... A combination of some uh, commercial products I was using mixed with things that I were doing and I actually got the opportunity when I first started barbecue it was I had no idea I would have a rub a sauce and website teaching barbecue classes this wasn't even a dream it wasn't a it just happened right. you know almost so in 2014 the American Royal uh, Old World Spices was having a um, almost like a promotion that teams that were competing uh, that were interested in putting out a barbecue rub or a seasoning, and if they got certain calls or placements, then they would work with them to create what's called the American Royal Championship Rub Line. So in 2014, I go to the American Royal, the only team from Arizona to represent, and I happen to do very well there. Mm -hmm. I took uh, first in chicken and in the Invitational with the perfect 180, uh, seventh in ribs and in the Invitational, and then in the Open the next day, I took uh, second in pork and 19th in brisket reserve grand champion. Wow. Um, a, a point to Tuffy Stone out of uh, GC. So it was, a, it was a phenomenal weekend. It was just phenomenal. I walked in all four meets and overall. And then, uh, I, like I said, uh, Old World Spices was having that promotion of teams that did well. They were looking at putting out a product that, um, you know, they might contact you. And you know what? I got a call. From old world spices and I said hey you did awesome we'd love for you to be involved in this uh, american royal championship rub line as our pork rub so they had a four rub pack it was chicken ribs pork and brisket the four categories of kcbs and uh cave man cuisine uh the backermans had the chicken rub they did always do well on chicken uh mike davis from laudable uh with the rib rub and uh, you know he's been a legend for years uh they picked me for the pork rub in that and they picked uh uh, the guys out of Texas, uh, Lucky Dogs Barbecue, 
Uh, they did awesome in brisket that year. And this was for the, um, the American Royal Open. So they picked us four to represent that brand. And then we worked with them to build our product for that, uh, that line that they were putting out. So I uh, basically worked with them to create the pork rub that I had, that I used on that pork for second place. After that, after I got my foot in the door and, 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 and saw that process and just saw everything about it and having a product out there, I, I guess my business mind started right. saying, you know what, I can, I, I can do this. I can make right. this happen. Right. Um, I, I, I know how to run a business. I've read financials for right. several years. You know, I know what makes money and what doesn't and how to market a business and, and, and put something behind it. And so after that, uh, American Royal Pork Rub came out with that line, which was sold, you know, at Walmart yep. and sold right. everywhere. Um, I said, you know what? Uh, it was it was a, a American Royal Championship pork rub by Luton Booty Barbecue, so it wasn't necessarily a Luton Booty Barbecue branded item, uh, but it had my name out there. So after that was in place, and you know, I said, you know, I got to have my own line. So that pork rub is basically transitioned into my everything rub, something that um, I wanted that pork rub and that everything rub to be. You know what? My wife loves barbecue potato chips. And she just loves them. I, I can't stand them, but she loves them. And she, I, uh, but I wanted, and she, it's that flavor. I wanted yeah. that everything rub to taste like barbecue. Yeah. And to me, I, I wanted those flavors in there that tasted like a barbecue chip to give you that, you know, smokiness and then the, the brown sugars and the paprika, paprika. Yeah, that's funny. Paprika to give you that paprika. color. Right. But all that, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, but being able to work with somebody like Old World Spices who has the capability and the capacity to fill, you know, international orders and products across Ace Hardware and Bass Pro right. Shop Cabela's and all these places that we're in, uh, being able to be partner with them was just a great opportunity. And, you know, when I see an opportunity, I'm going to go for it. And okay. so it went from that pork rub to now I have four uh products with them that we're going international with that we have been for the last four years and you know it's going to continue to to grow and and make it happen and that's what i love about this running my own business is i have the control over all that to, to make it happen or not right. you know? real quick other than loot and booty barbecue where else can they buy your product oh so uh nationwide in america we're oh, i'm available at uh, bass pro shops at okay. cabela's at shields at the farm and fleet at big r across the colorado and new mexico we're at uh, barbecues galore we're at uh, ace hardware over a thousand locations for Ace hardware which has been a great partner for us right. and uh, hopefully picking up the black rub soon um uh, uh, all the mom and pops. I can't. I can't tell yeah, you how many yeah, mom and pops across the country right, that right. I love. Man, those are the guys who are just putting it out there all day. Mom and pops across the country. Here in Arizona, I have maybe five or six uh, butcher shops. Barbecue Island, which has three amazing locations, it's a great supporter. Internationally, uh, it's uh, available through Hark Enterprises out of Melbourne, Australia, in um, uh, the UK. I got a distributor there, Sweden, uh, Barbecue Sweden, Holland. Um, looking at Mexico right now in South America, uh, but we have um, um, it's 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 growing and it's just been a, a I I can't tell you I mean I, I think I said before like I didn't never imagine this you know getting right. into barbecue you know twelve years right. ago, but uh, the opportunity's there and I want to continue to grind and make it happen and yeah. I'll be out there competing and, and doing what I got to do. Yep. Well, amen. Smitty, I'll tell you what, man, it's it's been great. You you got a very very good rub, and um, you know you've done incredibly well in the barbecue uh, arena, and uh, we've enjoyed having you on. If anybody's got any other questions for Mr. Smitty, is now is the time to let them rip because we're getting about ready to to close. I haven't heard any questions about aliens or pyramids yet. So. Yeah, so nothing yeah. on that so far. Nothing on so, that so far. Nothing. And since you're out I'll in Arizona. That for each yeah, if, since you're out in Arizona, I figured anybody would know about that. That would be you. So when you're connected, you're connected, man. That's it, man. Well, buddy, I tell you what, it's been a great show. Thank you for being on. And um, thank you, Mike. I appreciate all the work you've done with Barbecue Champs Academy. It's been an uh, amazing front and something awesome to be a part of with all these phenomenal pitmasters that I've looked up to for right. years and being in the business. It's just yeah. a great opportunity. And thank you for everything you do, Mike. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really do. Well, guys, I tell you what, uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed the show. I think it has been great. This is 
one of the nicest guys that you're going to meet in the barbecue arena and he's always willing to reach out and help people and and he's got some great cooking schools that he does all across uh, the united states and heck even overseas as well doing all these demonstrations on the green mountain grill i, I love it man in that pellet cooker is one of the best pellet cookers i have ever in my life cooked on and i'm getting more I just that's about all i do use now if i'm cooking around the house it's easy, it's easy man cool. right push easy a button pick. i remember you said something it's a wood push fire button, pit huh Wood fire. Well, I say a lot you, of you, 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 one of the things that you said, it's a wood fired convection oven. Absolutely. And I still remember wood. that. And I tell people that all the time. It's a wood fired mm -hmm. convection oven. You set it and forget it. And it's just phenomenal. So you can, but you know, you know me, I'm never going to forget it. I'm going to do everything right. I know. Well, guys, look, we appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you I'm glad y'all enjoyed the show. Uh, next week, Mr. Brian Crawford. Whoa. With Crawford's with Crawford's barbecue, Rob, America's uh, Rob right there. we had to get him on, and uh, especially after that big first place that he hit, that we're going to talk to him. I want to certainly always give anybody that has any kind of huge accomplishments a platform here at Barbecue Champs to talk about what they've done and their accomplishments. And Brian Crawford, congratulations, sir! That's yeah, a, that's an honor to be able to have. Uh, Not only a great product, but a great dude. You know, oh, he's friend, awesome. You know, he is an awesome, cool. awesome, awesome, down-to-earth That's what barbecue's guy. about, right? Yes, exactly what it is. Barbecue's about family. It's about friends. It's about loved ones and building those relationships. Got a great one with this man right here. We've enjoyed everybody. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Until next week, have a lot of fun and smoke on. Cheers, guys.